I offer these every week, along with a short teaching. Just click the subscribe link below to be notified through YouTube when I post the recording of the latest one. Or if you'd like to join me live, which I'd really welcome, go down into the description section below and follow the link along to be able to sign up for free. I'd like to offer a, an observation about meditation. Understandably, faced with many, many different kinds of meditations and claims about them, we wonder, what's the best meditation for me now, these days, and why? So my own perspective on this is that essentially meditation is fundamentally a matter of resting the mind on what draws your heart. In other words, we value certain ways of being, states of being, even in you know, very full forms of certain kinds of Zen practice, let's say, uh, as Dogen taught, we really value not making any effort whatsoever other than being aware. Well, that's what's drawing our heart. <laughs> that's what we value, let's suppose. So we rest our mind on what draws our heart which could be the cultivation of presence, the stabilization of mindfulness, the, the warming of the heart, the, 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 or even if we value it, a sense of opening out into everything and being increasingly in touch with the ways that we are being lived by everything as processes moving through us, carrying us along rather than the conventional way of being, which approaches life as a separate entity acting with force upon it and being forced upon by life altogether, separate from oneself. So if you value, as I do, uh, a stabilization of the felt sense of this knowing, of opening and um, connectedness with everything, well then we can use meditation as an opportunity to uh, rest our minds on that way of being which draws our heart. So you might ask yourself, given uh, just what's the case for you these days and also maybe given your sense of wisdom teachings and teachers, uh, what draws your heart? What is it that you wish to cultivate and grow in your meditative practice? Meditation is like, in some sense, gardening. It's quite simple. Uh, you know, we fertilize the ground, we water it, we plant seeds, we protect them, and we help them grow, and eventually they bear, they bear fruit. What is it that you wish to grow in the garden of your mind? Now, you may wish to grow an attitude of radical acceptance. And you understand that any effort to grow something in your mind gets in the way of that radical acceptance, which is what you want to grow. Okay, so rest your mind in radical acceptance. Um, not doing. Okay, great. If you want to grow insight into impermanence, you can rest your mind in a ongoingness of that recognition. What is it? these days that you want to grow. Uh, if you know my own material, um, I have attempted to, we could say, biologize uh, the Four Noble Truths, particularly the first and the second, uh, the Noble Truth of Dukkha, that some things are unpleasant, pleasant experiences end, and all experiences are insubstantial and ownerless and empty while existing, and then Tanha, the second noble truth of craving, you know, grasping, drivenness, insistence that when applied to dukkha, from which there's no escape, when applied to dukkha, that equals suffering. So why do we crave? Well, we crave when we feel like our needs are not being met. Aha. So if we can help ourselves repeatedly internalize the felt sense of needs actually being met, then we're less prone to craving. Oh, so that's why 
I really value resting the mind <clears throat> on genuine experiences of peacefulness, contentment, and love so that in the moment we experience that we are safe enough, satisfied enough, and connected enough in terms of those three major categories of needs. So gradually over time, we build up the traits of what we rest our minds upon, what we sustain attention to. So you gradually build up trait inner peace, trait inner contentment, trait unconditional love, which gradually um, really, really, really reduces the fires of craving. For example, So what is it you wish to grow in your heart? What, what calls you? It could be a sense of coming home. You're called to come home to your true nature, which for many extends into, and I believe for the Buddha as well, extends into a transcendental, uh, meaningfully distinct um, ground, for lack of a better word, of that is unconditioned and thus not subject to rising and passing away, like timeless, perhaps even a ground that is aware and even, even loving, divine. If that's not meaningful, no worries. So what is it that calls your heart these days? Good. Now, to some extent, we do preliminary training so that we can sustain the resting of our minds on what draws our heart. So we may do preliminary training and regulating attention through training and mindfulness, being able to stay with something that's not very stimulating or interesting like the breath, which therefore builds the muscle of deliberate sustained attention to something, which over time can become increasingly automatic and, and effortless and natural. But in the beginning, we need to train that muscle. Uh, Perhaps we need to bring in other uh, qualities in the mind. We need to strengthen them to be able to rest our minds on what draws our heart, like a sense of kindness and compassion for ourselves, being an ally, a friend, a guide, a helper to ourselves. We grow those. So we, we grow these capacities so that we can increasingly rest our minds on what draws our hearts. And then over time, we become what we rest our minds upon. You know, as the saying has it, you are what you eat. Well, from a neurological standpoint, we become that which we rest our minds upon through processes of neuroplasticity. So meditation is a wonderful opportunity to stabilize and strengthen various traits, various qualities that you'd like to increasingly inhabit and have them increasingly inhabit you, to become increasingly established in you as you are established in them. So what is it that you wish to establish yourself in these days? What would you like to have increasingly established in you? And then can you use meditation as well as meditative moments over the course of your day, in addition to some sustained formal practice, can you use meditation and meditative moments to increasingly internalize those ways of being that you value? All right? It's, um, it's really simple. It may not be easy, but it's simple when we understand it in this way. Please ask yourself intuitively, what is it that draws your heart? You might be surprised by the answer. But if it rings true to you, in effect, can you meditate on that and meditate in that which draws your heart? Meditate as that which draws your heart. This is a very fundamental aspect of the Buddhist path, 
You know, we can get sometimes caught up, as I did in my early access to it in my young 20s, <laughs> um, we can get caught up in the wisdom aspects. The teachings seem very exotic and interesting, and we can think about them a lot. Um, and, we, you know, we can certainly appreciate the moral dimensions, the aspect of sila, it's called, of virtue, restraint, non-harming, not harming others, not harming ourselves. We can really appreciate those. And it's also really important to appreciate the third fundamental pillar of practice alongside the two I've named so far, wisdom and virtue. There's the pillar of practice that's about mental training, sometimes called samadhi, including training in the capacity at the upper bound of non-ordinary states of consciousness. But in particular, resting your mind on what draws your heart so that it becomes increasingly established in you. Very important aspect of practice, to grow the good that lasts inside. And you can draw upon, um, if you like, material that I've pulled together from evidence-based sources eight different ways to increase neuroplastic change inside yourself. As you meditate or as you practice in life, many of these ways are implicit um, for different teachers. I think it's helpful to be explicit about them. Uh, you can find more about this on my website, um, the so-called HEAL process, H-E-A-L. It's a structure framework for uh, pulling these together, but basically, the longer you sustain an experience, the more it's going to tend to be internalized. So duration. The more intensely you feel it, including that you are given over to it, the more that the experience you're trying to grow inside that you're resting your mind upon fills your mind. It's all pervading. The more neurological registration is going to result. Third, um, a sense of bringing your body into it, not just being conceptual, bringing emotion into it. The richer the experience, the more it is going to be internalized. Uh, a sense of freshness, novelty, not knowing, inquiry, curiosity. These are factors of neuroplastic change that you can bring to bear in formal meditation and in uh, meditative moments throughout your day. Fifth, uh, besides novelty, a sense of personal relevance. You can recognize, oh, it's meaningful to me, not out of clinging, but out of appreciating, a sense of appreciating, valuing uh, what you're experiencing will heighten its neuroplastic internalization. I feel like you can look at my paper published with my friends and co-authors called Learning to Learn from Positive Experiences that has the citations for all the eight, I've said five so far, factors that you can bring to bear to steepen your growth curve, steepen the rate at which these qualities are becoming established in you. You can also add the factor number six of intention. We, we remember what we intend to remember in the broadest sense of memory. You know, we internalize what we intend to internalize. We become what we intend to become and with a kind of sincerity and integration of intention, intention. Another aspect is to give yourself over to it. Release resistance to whatever it is you're seeking to become, to establish. Give over to it, let it have you. And then last, uh, find what is rewarding in it, what is enjoyable for you, what feels good about it. Uh, as we focus on the reward value of experiences, that heightens their internalization. You don't need to do all eight. Uh, you can go back, maybe some kind person will list these eight in the chat. Uh, they're listed in my website. I have tons of freely offered material about it. You can find more about it in just about anything I've written. Um, we can deliberately help ourselves become who we long to be, which is fundamentally becoming who we already are. Uh, 
typically covered over by various things. That's a way to relate to the samadhi pillar of practice. All right. So let's meditate. Help yourself settle in. Settle into the present. Settle into your body. Settle into your breathing. Settle into the place where you are. See if you can remain stably present as you settle in. For a while, let's be particularly aware of the feeling of breathing. As you inhale, you can follow the breath as it enters the nose or mouth, flows downward, spreading out. The diaphragm descends as the rib cage and chest expand. And then the process reverses as you exhale. Diaphragm rising, chest contracting, air flowing up and out again. Over and over. Can you be patiently present, staying in touch with the breath continuously from beginning to end?
as you breathe, be particularly aware of the sense of being here, wherever you are, the here-ness, including the physically grounded here-ness of wherever you are. the ground upon which you rest, your location somewhere on this earth, staying aware of breathing while inviting and allowing a sense of being here and grounded to be more and more present for you. As you feel a sense of being grounded as you breathe, you can explore letting go. Knowing and feeling that you're grounded you can let go. You can explore letting go of worries, letting go of self-consciousness, you're already grounded. letting go even of the sense of self. This is a very useful exploration. Grounding and letting go, even completely letting go.
You can let attention wander through your body and let go of defensiveness, any holding or bracing or guarding, because you're grounded and all right. Ah, what a relief to let go of those defenses. You could find that there's a softening in the heart and an openness and unguardedness that is present as you let go of defenses because you're grounded and all right and can afford to do so. As we feel grounded enough and safe enough to let go, there can be a lovely opening at the edges of awareness. Opening in all directions, stably present as this opening enjoying it, and letting go at the edges of the opening. As you open outward into everything,
If it's meaningful to you, you can explore a sense of identity, gradually softening and shifting as there's an opening out edgelessly. And there can be a growing sense of identity shifting into being this open process, ownerless, uncontracted, unbounded opening into everything as identity. Not being conceptual about this or struggling with it, just seeing if this invitation is at all helpful to you as we meditate together. You can be the opening, letting go at all the edges. You can be the space in which this opening is happening.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 